Good morning. I wish you had the pleasure of standing where I'm standing right now because I have to tell you something. This is what the face of victory looks like and it's awfully gorgeous. Let me hear you. Let me hear you. Did we win? Did we win Colorado? It's overwhelming. It's overwhelming. But even as we <clears throat> rightfully celebrate all of our victories, we know there's still work to do. And that's why I've come before you today with my friend, my colleague, my beloved Ife Tayo Harvey. Tonight, tonight 500,000 people are going to be in prison for a drug law violation. 109 of them in the federal system alone. And we rarely, we sometimes say numbers, but not the human consequence, the real world experience of what happens when we disrupt and disassemble families and communities. Ife Tayo Harvey came to us, we were so blessed and fortunate this summer to work in our media offices in New York and she wound up talking about something she'd never even talked about with her family, about her own experience. I'm not gonna say any more, but I want to, because she'll say it more beautifully than I ever could, but I'm gonna ask you to join me in welcoming this beautiful young woman, 21, Smith College student, a senior, a major in African and history, African studies and history, and whose great truth is going to mean our freedom. Thank you, Asha. So, let's see. Um, my name is Ife Tower Harvey. I interned with the Drug Policy Alliance this summer. Um, I'm originally from Charleston, South Carolina. And so, here, I'm here to talk about my experience of having a parent incarcerated for a great portion of my childhood. Um, I grew up in a family of seven children. And I was known as being the really quiet and shy one. I really kept to myself and didn't really make much noise. But you know, I think I'm I think I'm done with that phase in my life. I'm tired of being quiet. <laughs> um, and I, I'm tired because I learned that being quiet, like bottling up all that anger and frustration, it. It, it turns into pain and that hurts. So, yeah, let me, I, I also wanna remind you guys that, like Asha said, most of the victims of the drug war aren't here with us today. They're in um, prisons, they're in foster homes, they're in hospital beds, or on the path of rehabilitation. Um, my dad, his name is Dexter Harvey, he immigrated to the United States in the late 1970s. Um, he was working in, as a migrant worker in Orlando, Florida. Um, so while he was there, he was propositioned by an undercover cop to sell cocaine. And as a new immigrant who was uh, seeking to financially support his family back at home, he accepted. Um, after being arrested and put in jail, he paid bail and he skipped town. Um, ten years later, <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, ten years later, my dad was arrested and convicted of cocaine trafficking and sentenced to 15 years in prison. Um, he was he only served eight years, and he was deported back to Jamaica. Um, and for me, while he was in prison, you know I always hoped that I would have that like conventional fa father-daughter relationship like Dr. Huxable had on the Cosby show with all of his kids. Uh, <laughs> but it, it took me until like my, fr my freshman year of college to actually realize that that was never gonna happen. Um, but I also understood that that was okay. Like it was okay for me to not have that typical relationship. And I also learned that uh, rebuilding a broken relationship is possible. It's not easy by any means, but it's definitely possible. 
So that helped me learn like how to value people, even with their shortcomings. Um, I want to tell you guys about my mom and my family back in South Carolina. So my mom has seven kids, um, five from a previous marriage, and me and my younger brother with my father. And um, after my dad went to prison, my mom was uh, stuck to raise seven kids by herself. And as many of you can probably guess, that's not really easy. Um, I really admire my mom deeply for holding our family together. And, you know, sometimes I wonder, like, how in the world did she do it? I asked her once, and, like, how did, how did you raise us without going crazy? And she said, reefer. Uh, <laughs> 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 um, but I think it could also be the fact that I have five older siblings who kind of acted as a second parent to my mom, and without them, I wouldn't be here. Um, so today, my dad, he works and lives in Jamaica. He's like a driver, mechanic, sometimes electrician, and, but even then, he can barely um, afford to support me and my brother financially because of the high variance between the American and Jamaican economy. Um, I, the last time I saw my dad, I was 16 years old. I was working part-time in high school to buy a passport and a plane ticket. And um, I didn't get to stay in Jamaica for a re really long time, but I don't regret visiting. Um, I got to be reunited with my dad for the first time in 10 years. Um, I met my paternal grandparents and some of my cousins, and I got to see the country where half of my family is from. Um, while I was there, my dad, he apologized for compromising our relationship and our family. But at that point, I had already forgiven him. Um, for me, making sense of my dad's absence, it, it meant forgiveness. We're gonna give a little support. We're gonna hold the space. We're gonna hold the space. We're gonna hold the space. But um, I, I, I want to emphasize that forgiving is not easy. It's a process. Um, I'm still overcoming it, obviously. <laughs> um, I forgave my dad for the implications of his absence. Um, no basketball games, no mar right. excuse me. No marching band competitions, no graduations. Uh, I forgave him for my struggle through depression and shame. And I, I also forgave him for not being a positive role model to my younger brother. Um, my younger brother is 19 years old. And he's been arrested multiple times for marijuana possession. And so sometimes I wonder who can he talk to for him to understand that the criminal justice system doesn't work for people like me. But I, I, I don't know, I don't have all the answers. But I'm gonna I'm gonna keep looking and until I find the answers, I'm gonna keep telling my story and listening to everyone else's. Thank you. Consequences, no world consequences. But you know, another consequence is that is our own power. We know that. We know we have the power to change laws. And if there's anybody in this room today who's had their life disrupted or otherwise dismantled because they went to prison, let me hear you. Let me hear you. Let me hear you. Oh, yeah. You're heard in this room today. 
And if you've ever loved someone, if you've had a family member who's been in prison, let me hear you today. Let me hear you, I can't hear you. If you've ever been horrified that people were sent to prison simply for what they put in their body, not for the harm they caused anybody else. Let me hear you this morning. Let me hear you this morning. And now, we're going to let the Obama administration hear us. We're going to let him hear us. Because when Eric Holder stood before the American Bar Association in August, and said that the laws needed to be challenged, we're here to challenge them today. Anybody with me on that? <laughs> 109,000 people take out your phones. Who got a smartphone today? You got a phone? Who knows how to text this morning? Come on. I know Ira Glasser does. He sent me mean text this morning telling me my mistakes. I know you got a phone, Ira Glasser. Come on. That's how the president of your board does you at 8 o'clock in the morning. Tell me what I did wrong. I can have his notice. That's how they do you. If you have a phone, check it out. And because of a generous contribution from Travis Mauer, we're going to be able to test for free. I'm going to ask you to join me in testing. And you know, it's so funny. People always make fun of the idea of 420. And yet thousands of people are sitting in prison. Fathers are deported because of marijuana laws. So when we text 420, 420, right now, got your phones up? 420, 420, we're gonna text the word pardon. And we're gonna send that message to Obama. So there on the screen, you're gonna text pardon to 420, 420, which is given to us courtesy of Travis Mauer. It has a couple of other steps in there, but I'm not that tech savvy or whatever. So. It's up there. So, uh, but I'm gonna get you as far as taking that your phone. Y'all with me on that? Y'all with me? And you're gonna text the word pardon to 420, 420, and we're gonna say set the captives free. Done? If you didn't say set the captives free, set the captives free. Say set the captives free, I can't hear you, Colorado. I set the captives free. Set the captives free! 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 